on the table, we have empathy is biased. So we're more likely to empathize with those we share certain similarities to, whether that's skin color, gender, sex, whatever, um, political ideology. Yeah. Um, it's bias, or sorry, empathy leads us to uh, towards short-term accommodations over long-term um, solutions. Um, bias can lead us to be emotionally burnt out and maybe lead to psychic yeah. numbing, pushing us yeah. out of a help of, out of a helping profession entirely. Um, would there is there anything else? Maybe there's some I've missed. Um, are there any other big problems with empathy that should be top of mind when we think about whether to center this? emotion in our, say, mental health uh, strategizing in a workplace or in our interactions with, with someone who needs assistance. You've done a really good job of capturing the main problems. I guess I'll add one. Yeah. It always struck me there's an arrogance to empathy mm. where I've heard it be said, like um, when I was living in the United States and, and, and an example that, that uh, an American politician gave says, you know, what we really need to do as, as white Americans is to feel, you know, empathy for what it is to be a black kid who's afraid of the cops and, and feels this way and that way. And I'm thinking, I don't think I, you know, I, good for you if you say you can do that. I don't know if I could have, feel, know what it's like, put myself in the shoes of a kid in that situation. I don't know what I could do put me in the shoes of a, of a trans kid facing discrimination of, of a woman who's, who, who is facing sexual harassment. I've never been in any of those situations. I think the idea is, oh yeah, I could do that. I got that one. I got that one. I got that one. I think it's arrogant. Mm -hmm. I think there's laboratory studies, by the way, finding that we are a lot worse at putting ourselves in other people's shoes um, than we think we are. So I think that there are other ways to be a good person. I think we could say, we could, well, we try to be fair to people try to care about them. But the idea that, that oh, I'm gonna get into your shoes and I'll know what to do is, is even if it were good and had good results, it's arrogant to suppose that we can do so. So that just, just to maybe we'll end in, in this section with, with just maybe one more point. Um, it sounds like Paul, you're making the argument that empathy also can contribute to inaction. It can, it can make us think that we're doing something just by virtue of understanding when in fact, we haven't done much at all, and we've convinced ourselves that we're good people, but largely in practice, we're unhelpful. Is that my understanding you correctly there? It, it is, and, and there are sort of writers who have talked about that, who have talked about the sort of, in some ways, self-indulgence of, mm. of empathy. I mean, suppose you're in some sort of trouble, and well, what I could do is really try to get into your skin, try to feel what it's like to be you. And that's in, and may experience vicariously. And it's going to bring me, bring me down, but I'll cope, I'll deal with this and so on. Wouldn't it be better for me to say, how can I help this guy? Right. right. I'm not going to bother trying to get, even if it, you know, even if it wasn't biased, you know, I'm not going to try to get an issue. I'm going to make his life better. Maybe I'll ask him, what do you need? And, right. may, and maybe um, it just seems, it seems that if you are, are, racked with anxiety for me to allow myself sometimes it's not a choice but if it was a choice for me to allow myself to share your anxiety feel anxious, why am i doing this who does it benefit and so so yeah there's a self-indulgence to it as well